9.2, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. What do you know about all the sides of an equilateral triangle? All the sides are equal. And if all the sides are equal, what do we know about the angles? All the angles are equal, which means it's going to be 180 degrees divided by 3, which means that each corner angle will be 60 degrees. If this is a diagram of an equilateral triangle, then each corner is going to be 60 degrees. What happens to an equilateral triangle when you fold it along one of the lines of symmetry? So imagine that you fold this equilateral triangle along that line of symmetry. What happens to the angle measure up at the top is that that, 30 degree, that 60 degrees is cut in half and that corner angle becomes 30 degrees. We've sketched sketch an equilateral triangle and the equilateral triangle folded below. Label the side lengths with the length of two. What do you notice about the length of the side of the equilateral triangle and the length of the base of the folded triangle? So imagine that this side length was two. This side length would also need to be a side length of two. And that means that each half folded length is going to be a length of one. So this is gonna be our 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. A lot of times when you look at 30, 60, 90 degrees triangles, they're gonna lay it down so that the 30 degrees is um, on the bottom. But just in your head, imagine that it's standing up so that the 30 degrees is upright or uh, drawn in the orientation that we prefer. What we're gonna do today, if this length is one and this length is two, what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out that there is a pattern for finding that third side length using Pythagorean theorem. Use Pythagorean theorem to complete the following information about a, the right triangle formed by folding an equilateral triangle. Simplify the radical. So if we have a leg length of one and a hypotenuse of two, the drawing would look like this. This length is one, this length is two, and we're trying to figure out how long is the second leg? How long is this leg length B? So we've got one squared plus B squared equals two squared. One plus B squared equals four minus one. So B squared equals three. The square root, so B equals the square root of three. Looking for a pattern, let's do it again, but increase the side lengths. If one leg is two and the hypotenuse is four, let's draw the picture. So this leg length is two, this hypotenuse length is four, and we're looking for this third side again. So we've got two squared plus B squared equals four squared. 2 squared is 4, plus b squared equals 16, minus 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, equals 12, the square root, and we're going to simplify the radicals, so the square root of 12 can be broken up into, how about a 4 and a 3, and a 2 and a 2, so then we've got two twos and a three. Two times two is four. The square root of four is a single two, square root of three. So you might be starting uh, to notice a pattern similar to the 45, 45, 90 if the leg length was one and a hypotenuse. So it's two, the third leg is the square root of three. If leg one is two, hypotenuse is four, then the third leg is two square root of three. Let's do one more using the Pythagorean theorem. So if one leg is three and the hypotenuse is six, and we're looking through that third side, we've got three squared plus B squared equals six squared, nine plus B squared equals 36, 36 minus nine, 
it's 27. So we're going to simplify the square root of 27. Let's do um, a 9 and a 3. And a 3 and a 3. So we've got the square root of 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is a single 3. Root 3. So we've got a root 3, 2 root 3, 3 root 3. And now let's try the next one. If the hypotenuse length is 8, if that length is 8, then leg A must be 4. And the third leg is going to be 4 root 3. If the first leg is 5, then the hypotenuse must be 10. And the third leg is going to be 5 root 3. So then let's take it to the general case. If leg A, if we represent that with an X, the hypotenuse is going to be double that, so we can represent it as a 2X. And then the third leg, so if we have our drawings, this is going to be an X and a 2X. Then our leg B, or the third leg, is going to be x times the square root of 3. So if we go back up to this top diagram and label what's going on, here is our length of x. That's the one we always reference. I'm going to call that the short leg. The hypotenuse is going to be double that, 2x, just like 1 to 2 or 4 to 8 or 5 to 10. And then this third side length is going to be x times the square root of 3. What conclusion can you make about the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle? They're all in reference to the short leg. So either we're taking the short leg and doubling to get the hypotenuse, or you're taking the short leg and multiplying by root 3 to get the longer leg. So let's try these two examples. This is the 30 degrees, this is the 60 degrees, and that's the 90 degrees. As you can see, this is not in the orientation that we normally prefer. If I redrew this triangle in the orientation that we've been working on, this would be the 9, the Y is the hypotenuse, and the X is the third side. So you can stand it up so that the 60 degrees is in the bottom right-hand corner so that you can see the orientation in the way that we prefer. So if this length is 9, then y must be double, whoops, 18, must be double that, so that must be 18. And then the x is the shorter leg times root 3, so 9 root 3. Let's try this one, 4, 4, and 4, which means this is an equilateral triangle. So that corner angle is 60 degrees, and this corner angle is 30 degrees. So this is in the orientation we like, so four, a 2 and a 4. So then h is going to be our short leg times root 3, 2, root 3. Let's try some examples of ones that don't fall into the 30, 60, 90 pattern. Consider what happens if the links do not fall in the pattern. We've got 4 root 3 as the shorter leg. We would normally like that to be just a single number. Like it would have been nice if that was just a 4, because then it would be 4, 8, and 4 root 3. But the 4 root 3 is on the shorter leg already, which is not the position that we normally like it. But that's okay. We can use our um, patterns in words to help us work backwards. So if you have a shorter leg and you would like a hypotenuse, the pattern is the hypotenuse equals the short times two. We just double it. So our hypotenuse is m. Our shorter leg is four root three, and we want to multiply that by two. So then the four times two makes m eight root three. And then um, to get your uh, long leg, we need to do, to get the long, we take the short times root 3. 
So the long leg is an N, the short leg is a four root three, and then we're gonna multiply by another root three. So we've got N equals four, the root threes to go together to become root nine, and then square root of nine is three, four times three, so N equals 12. Let's try another. All right, the orientation of this one has the 30 degrees up at the top, which means Y is our short leg, X is our long leg, and this time they've provided us a hypotenuse. So we'd like to work backwards to get from the hypotenuse back to our short leg. So the pattern is hypotenuse equals short times two. We have the hypotenuse, four root three, equals our short, which is a Y, times two. Divide by two. So Y equals four divided by two, two root three. So then now we can use that to do the second pattern, long equals short times root three. The long leg is an X. Our short leg is now two root three times another root three. Two times root nine, two times three, so X equals six. Pause this video and try this third one on your own. All right, this last one, do these links fall into the pattern? So we've got nine times the square root of three divided by two is the long leg. We've got our short leg missing and our hypotenuse missing. So if we stand this up upright, you can always redraw it. So we've got nine root three over two and a missing Y and a missing X. So the question is, does this fall into the pattern? The answer is yes because you can reduce nine divided by two to become a 4.5. So we could rewrite this as 4.5 root three. If that's the case, then this 4.5 is actually the length of our shorter leg. So 4.5 is our short leg and then double to get our hypotenuse would be nine. So yes. It does, it's just written as a fraction. I could write the three side lengths as a fraction as well. So you could write this side length as nine over two, and then uh, still makes the hypotenuse nine. So this version is just written as a decimal, this version is just written as a fraction. Thank you.